Hey everyone, welcome back. For this installment of the Barn Find TT restoration project, we're gonna have a look at what happened to this engine. I'm gonna get under there and open up the sump so you can see how that can be done. You may wanna open up the sump in order to clear out your pickup pipe, which can often get blocked. So this might be a helpful video for you for that job. But I wanna open it up to see what possibly could have happened to this engine, whether or not there was like internal damage that happened prior to the engine getting smashed down or if the engine dropping was purely the incident that led to the current state of the barn fine TT. So let's go and have a look and see what's going on. So looking at it from the front, we can definitely tell, you know, it's all a mess. And in the previous video, when I looked at that crack and showed you that you can really see how bad the crack is, the car felt really low and this is why. You can see that the engine doesn't really sit properly. And if you look closely here, this mount has dropped significantly. And that's because you can see something <laughs> terrible has happened there and it looks like the two bolts have failed, making that engine drop down really, really low putting stress on that dog bone mount, putting stress on the engine, and ultimately having the sump hit the ground and causing that massive crack. But I wanna know a little bit more about this engine. I'm gonna see if there was actually an internal failure or not, because I suspect that there has been. So what I've gotta do first is jack the engine up and raise it so that I've got access to those two bolt heads. So now that I've got the engine jacked up a little bit higher and I've just got the jack stand there supporting it up, you can see that the height it's at, it's much more suitable for working under. We're back under the car again at the cracked sump. There should also be a 19 mil sump bolt. Uh, yeah, so it would usually be in this area here but that's gone you'd want to undo these two little bolts at the turbo oil drain and then of course we want to remove this plug here uh, and then what else there's going to be all of these little 10 mil bolts around the perimeter of the sump that you'll need to remove with some of the most annoying ones being in there, which can be the most tricky ones to get. Uh, also, don't forget there is this bolt here, uh, which you can access from the other side of the dog bone that needs removal. And then we should be able to take off the sump and have a peek inside. So this one here is just a, whoop, 16 mil. Now there are three of these 16 mil bolts that need to be removed from that side of the gearbox. Once that's done, remove all the little 10 mil bolts on the perimeter of the sump. And honestly, I don't care what happens here because as long as those plugs and sensors are fine, the rest of it can be broken because it's pretty stuffed anyway. Here we go. A dry and crusty inside. So the next part is going to be removing a few of these components. So this um, plastic shield which is just held on nice and easily with some 10 mil bolts. So the same bolts as there were before surrounding the sump. One there. That just stuck on really well. Okay. Oh, something bad's happened in there. Look at that. So that is all like shards of metal 
in there so I reckon <laughs> something's been eaten up inside or something terrible's gone wrong so let's have a closer look and see exactly what's happened. Hey everyone, so if you've never seen the this part of the 1.8T Audi TT engine before, this is the oil pump. You can see there that chain drives the pump. Then you've got this little pipe that goes across and that's the oil pickup pipe. And if you can see in there, there's like a little sieve looking thing and that is where the oil gets picked up from and sucked into the engine uh, to circulate it around. You can see it's kind of, it needs a little bit of cleaning, but it's definitely not blocked. Now, if we focus our attention to the components uh, on top of that, uh, you can see uh, on this side where the oil pump is, that's cylinder number one on this side here. Here, you can see that's the flywheel. And that's conrod number four, conrod number three, two, and one is a little bit hidden because it's in there, but there's number one. And what I was looking at, uh, what I was looking for actually, I'll see if I can show you, is whether or not these rods were bent. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to show you this in the video. So what I'll do if I can't get good light, I'll take a picture and show you what, what I mean. But basically what you want to do to see if the rods are bent, it's hard to tell from underneath, but I found that like a telltale sign is going to be when, um, when you see that the small end or the top end of that uh, rod or where the connecting section is to the piston, uh, the gap on either side of that is uneven to the wrist pin. Um, uh, so you can see that one there, hold on, let me just zoom in for you. Oh no, I already have. But you can see that on the cylinder two, you can see it really well, that the gap uh, in between the rod's small end uh, and the sort of shiny bits of metal on either side of where the connecting rod joins to the piston That's nice and even so that's a good telltale sign that that rod isn't bent or is it? Actually looking at that really closely you can definitely see it is not in the middle and so number two is definitely bent uh, the next one here, so this is number three, so you can see right up there, the other two are going to be difficult to look up. Uh, so you'd want to uh, rotate the engine a little bit, but you can see right up there, that looks pretty center to me. If you think it's not center, let me know, but that looks pretty good to me as well. So I don't think um, there's number four. Let's have a look and see if I'll sh try and show you that one as best as I can as well. It's a little bit of a funky angle. Uh, that one. There. Hopefully you guys can see that. So that one looks like it's nice and center too. Okay, so just want to have a closer look at all this stuff that's in there. It's really odd. Um, what do you guys think that is? I mean, there's definitely some metal pieces in. That's definitely metal. Don't know if that's going to focus, but that is 100% metal. Um, if you look on the little guard in the sump, they're shavings, that's for sure. Look how shiny that is. What is going on? <laughs> Something's definitely gotten chewed up in there. I have no idea what it could be. So if you guys have any hints or clues as to what might be going on, please let me know in the comments below. And yeah, I might have to do some further investigation to see exactly what's happened. All right, everyone, so pretty sure I've had enough heartbreak for the time being. I did manage to fish out the oil level sensor plug here, which is joined up to this other plug that goes into the gearbox. I'm pretty sure that's for the speed sensor. Unfortunately, the previous owner had cut 
this from the rest of the loom but that's going to be nice and easy to repair because you've got all the different wire colors there you just have to match wire color up for wire color so i'll leave it at that for this installment of the barn find tt restoration project for the next video i think what i'll show is preparing the engine to be pulled out from the car so i hope you're enjoying this content guys and hope to see you next time remember to like and subscribe so that you're kept up to date with the restoration project and i'll see you next time bye